Jeff, Jeremy here. Thanks for hanging out with us. Good morning. Welcome in. So, do you remember what happened to the Saints during Hurricane Katrina? What happened to the New Orleans Saints? Because the, remember, the Superdome suffered quite a bit a of damage. A lot of damage. They had to go play somewhere else. I know that. They played every single game on the road that year. Oh, that's right. They were terrible. They lost a lot of games. Then they become quickly turned around. Uh, they came, became America's team. It was the rallying cry for success because of what had happened to them. And they've been good ever since then. Um, and with Sean Payton at the helm. Uh, yeah, but now they don't have Drew Brees. They don't have Drew Brees. That's a very good point. I'd heard on a podcast that there was a possibility that they weren't going to be able to play in the Superdome until week eight, meaning half of their season was going to be on the road. This year because of Ida? Because of Ida. Now, there's another report that came out yesterday that says they're unsure when they will be able to return to New Orleans for their week one game against the Packers. But it appears that they will be able to return home this season. So that game might be played in Green Bay. Because the good news is the people that run the the Superdome said that the Dome is fine. There is no major damage that we have found. Why not just go back and play? Do you have to, what, you have to get like inspectors in there and all that stuff? Yeah, they're probably going to have to do a bunch of stuff so if they're going to allow fans to come back and all that kind of jibber-jabber. But... Um, well, that's good news for them. Yeah, that is good news. And it's good news for you because you've got Camara on your fantasy well, team. And they were, so I know you're paying attention to it. And they are now, and I, I know this, this may have been a Drew Brees thing, but at home, they're untouchable. On the road, they're vulnerable. Yeah, they're, they're, they're super stink. vulnerable. They yeah. And I remember thinking at the time when Katrina hit that they had to play all their games on the road, um, that, you know, it was like, I was like, oh, they'll be fine. You know, they're used to that. But then after like week eight, man, you could tell it was just taking a toll on the team, but they didn't even care to play football anymore after that point. <laughs> even the coach was like, screw this. I don't even play that. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm working every week out of a Holiday Inn Express, putting together game plans. Forget it. I don't care. I don't even want to be. Th- and every year they have to deal with hurricane season before the NFL season starts. And it's always right before. Right, yeah. Right before. Like a month right before. or weeks before. Man, that must be a pain in the ass. And, uh, and we learned they take a direct hit about every 10 years in New Orleans. Hey, coming up, um, if you like pumpkin spiced coffees and lattes, and that's like your pumpkin, you know, it's all pumpkin season now. Starbucks started this thing, and now everybody's into it. And I know there's a lot of ladies out there that like it. And I know there's a lot of guys out there that like it, too. You just don't like to talk about it. Is that what you're saying? What if I told you you could get drunk on pumpkin spiked, well... Pumpkin spice that spiked. Which, you know, I don't mind pumpkin spice, but I'm not like a hardcore pumpkin spice person. I don't think I would do this. Uh, looks like there's now a pumpkin spice spiked seltzer. It looks like one of those Trulias or uh, whatever those things are. Yeah. It's in the tall, skinny can. Guess who's making it? I said one guess, Major Brewer. Budweiser. Yep, Bud Light. Bud Light Seltzer. Bud Light Seltzer is out there. It's a real deal. I haven't tried one. I'm not a Bud Light fan, though. I found there's other domestics that I prefer over Bud Light. Uh, The 12-pack also includes toasted marshmallow, maple, pear, and returning favorite, Apple Crisp Spike Seltzer. While you're on the topic, because I don't think, (laughs) I don't don't believe they belong in that space, but also I don't believe that they're offshoot brand belongs in the space that they're in and did you see that natural light is coming out with lemonade vodkas oh yeah i saw that the other day Natu- like that's not your space your space yeah. is drunk but college everybody's got to get in that market everybody's got to get in the market now to do the malted beverages the seltzers but this isn't the malted it. beverage this is this is oh this is vodka vodka, vodka. oh there's so oh, so but it's so, flavored vodka and i think it's towards a, fem- a female yes it is it is 30 percent so I guess sixty proof is what is what it is, ends up being, not eighty proof like most vodkas, or even some higher uh, quality vodkas that push the limit yeah. of, of of society. So this is a lower ABV, but I, why? Like I don't think of one. I don't think of vodka natural light. I don't. Th- I definitely don't think of lemonade in natural light. Yeah. 
Like, why are you getting into this space? Let somebody else do it. Eliminate vodka. Like th- that has to have been done before. But well, I'm sure it's been done before. But they're like, hey, we're natural light. <laughs> you are the <laughs> piss poor example of beer. Like, why would I turn to you for like real lemonade drink. or vodka? Real rednecks drink natural light. <laughs> like rednecks drink bush light or bush. Real rednecks drink natural light. Like, why would you go that way? It's stupid. Coming up, uh, dumbass of the day. Mm, this went bad. Guy got a bad haircut. He got mad. He went back to the uh, to the owner of the uh, barber shop, and uh, he had a way he was going to settle it. And things turned around on him fast. And let's just Don't say he's not barbers. he's not doing so well today. We'll get to that next. Coming up, dumbass of the day. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. How pathetic can some people be? My wife, her new thing is, uh, I, I she says I need a gun. She wants to get a gun to protect the house. She's like, we need it to protect our home. And I got to be honest with you, there is no way I'm getting my wife a gun because there is no way I'm not getting shot with that gun. <laughs> Buying my wife a gun is sort of like me saying, you know, I kind of want to kill myself, but I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> Uh, I guess I guess if I had a gun and she had a gun, it'd be okay if we both had guns. And then maybe every argument could just end like the end of a Tarantino movie. Just like, <laughs> all right, you put yours down. We're going down easy, both of us. Same time, whatever you need. We'll cuddle, I'll listen, whatever. Let's just put the guns down now. Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOZ. Oh. Uh, guns are perfectly fine in the right hands. You put them in the wrong hands... Nothing but trouble. Off to our favorite state for dumbass of the day. In the town of Melbourne, Florida. Barbershop owner with... You said it right. Huh? You said it right. Melbourne? Yeah, the idiots down under, they said Melbourne. No. Oh. But uh, in Florida, it's Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne. Like it's spelt. Uh, barbershop owner shot and wounded a masked gunman who entered the shop on Saturday afternoon. He thought he was going to try to rob him. This happened about 325. Uh, it was a small strip mall in Melbourne. You know, and Melbourne's where I went to um, uh, military school. Military school, because you were, you were a problem child. Bad kid. Yeah. I remember you telling me about that. More of a camp. He shot the guy, wounded him, he disarmed him, and then he called the cops. The cops uh, did the investigation, and they found out this wasn't about a robbery at all. This guy was pissed off because he got a bad haircut from this barber. Decided to go back and uh, handle things himself. Once again, you put a gun on the wrong person's hand, bad stuff. Put a gun in the right hand, barbershop guy, good stuff. If everybody thought, oh, gosh, I mean, go in there and rob that place. Oh, but wait a second. I heard that guy shot another guy. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, I don't think I'm going to rob that guy. Like the best advertiser. It's better than say, putting a sign on the uh, door that says, warning, guard dog, or something like that. Right. <laughs> I would have a sign that says, I have a gun and I'm not afraid to use it. And then post the news story right underneath. Yeah. <laughs> We've all See? got bad haircuts, right? I don't think I've ever got to the point where I was mad. I even, I've never even complained. I just don't go there anymore. Find another bar right. to go to. You vote with your dollars, right? Yeah. You, you persecute with your, your dollars, not with uh, firearms. I mean, well, he it was, must have been a really bad haircut. Yeah, uh, he was shot. He was taken to the hospital. Now he's got to deal with medical bills and all that kind of stuff. And, and then he's also been charged with aggressive assault with a firearm. Thank God he didn't fire that thing, or it could have been attempted murder. He's just going to get uh, aggressive assaults. And a very valuable lesson. Don't be going in swinging a gun around. Yeah. Idiot. Congratulations. Oh, you got a gun? I got a gun, too. <laughs> Pissed off because you got a bad haircut. Now you got a bullet in your ass. You're Jeff and Jeremy's. Dumbass of the day. 